Hello, welcome to the West Ham Way YouTube. Myself, Mark Harlow and Riley Finch, or Finchy, as he loves to be known. Well, I was just talking about this actually prior, yeah, before we get into the video, wasn't we? And I said, yeah. oh, because I think of uh, every time I think of your name, I think of Finchy from the office, uh, the UK office. And I'm, I might start calling you that, but you don't. You're, you don't get called that. Is it Finch you get referred to? I, I mean, so mo most most people know me as Riley, but like most of my close friends all just call me Finch. And yeah, uh, yeah I mean, you know, you've also because obviously my last name's Finch, and also you've got uh, American Pie. I'm quite reminded of, of Finch from American Pie. <sighs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. tell me you've never think... watched American Pie, mate. No, no, no. Yeah. I just had to think of the name then. But yeah, no, you're right, Finch. And obviously, when he's stiff as mum, the only bang. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not quite as successful as him, maybe in in that department. But yeah, no, um, no. you know, fit, yeah, Finch you, is you, all. You, you, it all can't be legends like us, like me and Finch, mate. You know what I mean? Well, so, you know, you know. but uh, yeah, ro normally Finch or Finchy. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I sometimes I get uh, a little bit. I often don't even respond to the name Riley sometimes because I get called Finch and Finchy so often by people. Oh really? Well, I'm going to start to call you Finchy. That's that's what's happening now. That, I've Mate, changed now. Yeah, but well, I've got I've got you know I just can't call you Mark now. That's too that's too formal. What's your what's your version? Carlo, it's called Carlo. Right, Carlo. Carlo. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, and as I was known at school, like my my mates were calling me Carlo. Oh, um, so anyway, mate, we've got to get on. Let's get on to the news. Get on to the exciting news that is um, our ownership at the club. So absolutely. So there is there is actually a bit of movement going on at the moment first of all let's talk about the topic that is the fact that in march next year um the club's um contract with um the london stadium or a leasehold there's a there's a there's a clause in that that will be expiring and the clause is that i think it's well known that um if the club's sold by david sullivan uh, and gold that that a certain percentage doesn't need to go back to the government after this. That was always the agreement when they took the, um, you know, the um, become a tenant of the stadium. Um, so that's interesting. So it's always kind of been noted that once that comes into play, once so sorry that expires that clause, they will probably look to sell the club because they're, they're mm -hmm. businessmen. They're going to they're going to make a lot of money. You know, you consider the fact they I think they bought the club for about. I should have looked this up before, which is a bit embarrassing, but I think it was around about 70 million. Was that right? Around that kind of number? It might, might have been less. I can't. I need to look into it. But whatever you're looking at, they're going to make a hefty profit, profit on oh, it. Oh, sure. So, um, and Daniel Krasinski is obviously he came in, I think, over a year ago now. He's a major shareholder. And I think actually Krasinski's in, um, in, uh, influence at the football club is bigger than we realise. I think it's not just the fact he's just put money in and he's standing back. I think he actually he's taken a very keen interest in it. He's made very big changes in the ballroom over the summer, something that got kind of missed. We did report on it in a video um, previously. Um, so Daniel Krasinski is making moves at West Ham. He, he's obviously quite a big, he's got a big say-so. I, 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 I go as far as say he's probably got more of a say-so probably than Sullivan now, even though Sullivan's... Still, the ultimate, the, big, the larger shareholder, you get the feeling that this is probably going to change very soon. Now, what's interesting this week is that um, I don't know if you know, mate, but Kudinski at the moment owns, I think, twenty two percent a stake in the Royal Mail in the UK. Um, he's been looking to become the major shareholder and basically buy out all the other shareholders and own it, which is, you know, fair enough. That's what he wants to do. But the government, of because of the war in Ukraine and because of the sanctions against uh, Russia, were reluctant for this to happen at the moment. I think they were looking into it and they wanted to make sure that the, there was no proceeds going, of course, over to Russia, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they've just, this week they announced that they've actually given the green light now. Um, they've done an investigation into him and there's no connections. They're very happy for him to, to carry on his business. Now, what's interesting about that, although it has no direct impact on West Ham, it's interesting because a lot of people have felt that the war... Uh, and the cost of living crisis and all these things going on, that it was going to mean that it could have had an impact like it had previously. If you remember when, um, was it Egg Magnuson? Do you remember when he bought the club and obviously we had the, and the financial crash and then obviously he had to sell quite quickly. And that's when David Sullivan um, got involved with the club. But this is clearly showing that actually this isn't having an impact on Krasinski. I think actually his wealth actually increased during this period. So, which is like, you know, you look at Elon Musk has just bought Twitter. I think some of these big businessmen, actually, they see this as an opportunity, a good time in the market to start purchasing things. So it's looking likely at this stage, you would say on the face of it, that Krasinski is going to make moves at West Ham um, mm. into next year. I, I'd actually go as far as saying that I imagine by next summer, we'll have new own. Uh, he'll be the owner of the club. That's my gut feeling. Um, we spoke to Tony Cotty on this channel um, a few weeks ago, and that was his feeling. I think he knows, I'm assuming he knows people within the club, and he was, his view is very strong that uh, that Krasinski will be this, the main main um, owner of the club come next summer. 
So what's your feelings, Matt? Are you excited by this? You Do you want to see a, a change at the top? Well, um, one question I'll ask you is, um, he's the majority share owner at Slavia Prague, is he not? Yes, he is, yeah. So one complication with that is he cannot be the majority shareholder of two clubs that may yeah. face each other in Europe or any other competition. So if he was to become the majority shareholder at West Ham, he would have mm. to relinquish his power uh, at Slavia Prague, either by becoming a minority shareholder mm. or just by cutting ties with the club completely. Personally, I think he's got to cut ties completely realistically um, just because, mm. you know, the legal complications with that is so difficult. Even even us buying Suchik and Sufau has been very questionable um, yeah. at times. Uh, you know, unless you're, uh, you've are you got the Red Bull model, which is a very, very complicated uh, way of running things with, between Leipzig, Leipzig and Salzburg. On the face yeah. of it, if you're a majority share of two clubs that may face each other in Europe, you're not allowed to do that. Um, yeah. So that'd be the first thing you'd have to do. And if he, and if he did that, if, if he became a minority shareholder in Slavia Prague, that's going to be a massive indicator that he's going to take over at West Ham. So that's something we've yeah. really, really got to look out for. Mm. But it does seem like he's going in that direction. He's you know becoming a majority shareholder in an English-based business yes. does give you an inkling that he might be moving his business over to the UK. Um, and obviously, you say it's not got that much of an impact on West Ham. But you know, in that sense, yeah, you're definitely right. It could do. Um, yeah. But look, as much as I dislike GSB, and I don't think anyone in the club really can say too many good words about them, mm. in recent times, they haven't done all that wrong. You know, they've appointed no. Mark Noble as director of football. They've spent through the nose this summer. They've backed Moyes. They've kept Moyes in the job. You know, was he the right manager to appoint? Probably want to see a bit more ambition. Fair enough. But they've appointed the right manager. They've appointed mm. the right mm. staff. They've given yeah. the right amount of money. The only other question is with the stadium move. But... I think, and you know, it's a, it's a difficult conundrum to consider. But would you rather be West Ham bowling ground finishing fifteenth, sixteenth, thirteenth, twelfth, or would mm. you rather be West Ham challenging for Europe with this amazing team that's got mm. a stadium that's not going to hit the legacy of the bowling, but can try and emulate a decent football playing stadium? And I think a lot yeah. of people, <clears throat> realistically, nostalgia aside, would probably choose the latter. Mm, so, mm. and sometimes it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. How do you know Krasinski's not going to come in and, and be an awful owner? He's going to not spend yeah. any money. He's going to be this terrible owner that, you know, ends up bankrupting the club. You never know. GSB, at least for now, have always been almost too wise with their finances. But at yeah. least they're spending at the moment. It's quite hard right now. You know, this isn't four four years ago, five years ago, GSB. This is the current GSB. Whether you like them or not, it's quite hard to argue that they're doing a decent job of running the football club at the moment. No, I, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if, you're gonna, if we're going to criticise the board when things aren't going right, fair enough, then and then surely then you have to praise them when things are going well. I'm not saying that really? he's been praising them, but at the end of the day, they, you know, you're right. They, they've answered, they've done the things that the fans wanted to see. They've shut up, which is something that we're all desperate for because we're sick of hearing comments from Karen Brady every five minutes. Although she does occasionally yeah. still speak, it's, it's far less so now. David Sullivan, we don't really hear a thing from anymore. Um, Nor David Jack Golden. Sullivan. Say again, sorry? Nor Jack Sullivan, which was another... Nor Jack Sullivan, yeah. They're, they're all very quiet. So they have listened to the fans' criticisms. And I think they've acted well. And like you say, like, you know, all right, we can look at the summer and say, yeah, they did spend money. Krasinski, I'd imagine, had an impact in that. But at the end of the day, things are going better. They are. We're in a much better place. If you look back, you know, as you say, if you wind back five, six, seven years ago, um, you know, we were playing the championship and, you know, all these kind of things. And then you look at the players we've got now, you know, we've got Lucas Paqueta, you know, a Brazilian international. We've got, you know, Italy's number one striker, a national striker playing for West Ham. So, you, you know, Declan Rice, in England, you know, future England captain, all these things are looking very good. So we can't, they, they need some credit. Um, but I would say that, I, I think realistically, that, that if, you, if you're in David Sullivan's shoes and gold, I mean, gold's, um, very old now. I, I mean, I think he's come in pretty much the last period of his life, really. Um, you'd imagine so now. I think, oh, yeah. like, well, he is, isn't he? Like, I mean, I, 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 I don't, not, not, not to be morbid, but it's true, isn't it? I mean, he's you know, he's mid 80s, late 80s now. He's, They're both he's thinking of retirement, now. I think, is what you're trying to put out there. No, I think it's even beyond that, mate. I mean, if, I think he bought West Ham. You, know, you think when he bought West Ham, they were he was getting on a bit. I mean, we're talking quite a long time now, and I think you know, you don't really see much of him in the public eye anymore. Um, and the last thing, the last image I did see of him, he looked like he'd aged quite a fair bit. So, all I'm saying is, if you're in their position, why would you want the club now? Like, you know, you're going to make a lot of money anyway. And realistically, they want to set their families up. And um, I don't believe this. 
their children have much interest. I mean, D Jack Sullivan's now not no longer involved in the women's team, is he? He's, he's walked away from that. So I, it was my understanding that if if he did step down, mm. that he would sort of give ownership to Jack. So I mean, so you yeah. know, Sullivan, Sullivan has majority ownership now, and, and yeah. he's worth a lot more than David Gold. Mm. I think David Gold at the moment is kind of just taking a back seat and allowing Sullivan to kind of make all the big decisions, even though it is shared ownership, shared majority ownership. Yes. Um, you know, Sullivan is kind of recognises the owner, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think I think he would quite happily pass it down to Jack, which would be a very unwise business decision. But mm. I do I, I do get that feeling that he would do that, whether whether I'm right or not. Obviously, you know, it's not exclusive or anything. But no, no, I I think that was always the kind of plan. And I know, I, but I do get the impression it was a a pitch that probably wasn't real. That's my gut feeling. I think, you know, they, they wouldn't have said, oh, at the end of the day, they're not going to come out and say, um, no, I'm looking to sell the club in a few years. I don't think they would have said that. It's, it makes more sense to go, actually, when I sat down, I want to hand this to my boy. Yeah. Um, but I get the impression that isn't going to happen. I, I don't think that's going to be the case now. I think if they do invest, it'll be probably in another, another football club, I'm guessing. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, don't forget, you know, Terry Brown was an owner before um, uh, Magnuson came in and he's still on the board. So it's not as if the Sullivans and Golds will walk away completely. I'm sure they'll still have some sort of stake in it, but they'll just stand back. And that's my gut feeling of where this is going. Um, but um, no, I mean, I, I think I, I'd, I'd be, I'd be excited by the move. I, I actually think that I think many fans will be, I think that Krasinski's come in and made some really, he just, he, he's brought an element of a professionalism to the club. I think that, that you can kind of sense that, that there's a bit more, of a proper board and a proper bit, yeah. you know, decisions are being made properly rather than, you know, David Sullivan sitting in his golden bath with a cigar in his mouth and ringing up agents. Seem Those days seem to be long gone now. It's like we're getting proper people involved um, at the club, which I, which is so good to see. And I think, that's a, and this is reflective on pitch, isn't it? Because uh, we're, we're doing well. Everything seems to be on, on, on the up at the moment. So, um, no. But it I'm can't be too much of a coincidence that as soon as Krasinski stepped in, we spent, you know, probably up three times the amount we spent in the Absolutely. last couple of windows. It can't be that much of a coincidence, surely. Absolutely. And and let's be honest, I mean, I, I mean, end of the day, David Sullivan, you know, I know they're the owners of a club, but no, I don't think there's no such thing as an owner. You know, the fans really own the club. It's it's a, it's a community thing, isn't it? You, you can call them out. It's, it's not a, it's not a, a bike, is it? It's something that it's, it's something that, you know, we're all involved in. So I think, you know, is it a custodian? Custodian is the right word, isn't it? That's yeah. what they are really. And, and I don't like the fact that David Sullivan and David Gold, um, take millions out of the club every year. I think it's really poor that they loan they they loan the club money and then uh, and put a high interest rate on it, and then they go, oh, we don't take a wage. <laughs> you, you do like when I mean, you take out millions out of the club every year, and I, and I and most well, most owners do that though. You know, FSG does that, and we've seen yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, but it's just, it's just the a, American it, owners do that. What I'm well. saying is that but they're they're business people, then aren't they? That be honest, don't sit there and go, I'm a West Ham fan. Oh, I live yeah, down no, the road. Yeah. All I care about is West Ham. When I think, well, you. You know, be honest. Say I'm actually a businessman. I want the club to do well, but I'm also want to make return on my profit. I think people would be more respectful of them if they just said that. But they spin all this bullshit about being West Ham fans. I mean, West David Gold definitely is, but David Sullivan isn't. We know he isn't. I mean, he's a Cardiff fan for a start. So for him to keep going on and bleating on about he loves West Ham so much, to be honest, you're a greedy bastard and just wants to make money. And you just be honest. I've been a fan. And Krasinski, no doubt, is as well. He's a businessman, isn't he? He's not. He, he's not a West Ham fan. Oh mate, he, he's Slavia. You know, he's not growing up in the you know regions of Slavia Prague watching bloody James Tompkins and fucking Absolutely. Kevin Green he's a businessman. goals in the championship. Like yeah, yeah. He's obviously he's a businessman and. So, like, like I say, it's more respectful if you come out and say that because no one's stupid here. We all know you're a businessman. Yeah, well, yeah. But if he but... says, I'm a businessman that wants to see West Ham win the Premier League in the next yeah. 10 years, you go, brilliant. Like, that's what we want to hear. But if he says, but I'm going to, I want to return on my investment, I go, yeah, fair enough. But uh, in wouldn't. that return on my investment, I want to take West Ham to the very top. The problem is we've had owners that spin another story and always go, oh, we're West Ham through and through. We want to see them go to the very top. And really, you look at them and think, mm, you don't really because you've not really invested a great deal. You know, we've had to, you know, we've struggled over the years. You know, the 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 the, the, the shocking mismanagement has been horrendous at times. And the fact that, you know, as we say, they're taking money out of the club. But anyway, that, that's enough matter about them. I, I I just think that the, these moves from Krasinski recently have been quite promising and quite exciting now. I, I think the future's looking good for West Ham. And I think, like, as we said, that hopefully by next summer, you'd imagine that there'll be some big changes at the club. And um, I'm all for it, man. I'm quite excited. I'm really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean... Definitely, definitely watch out for Slavia Prague. If the ownership changes in there, then absolutely, it could be on well on the cards. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.